In this video we're going to cover how to make uh, precision and collision masks, um, which this option is only available uh, when making your sprites if you go into advanced mode. So if you go to file and check mark advanced mode, you'll get the options for this. There's a couple extra features in advanced mode, but that's the one we're going to cover for now. Uh, you'll have to save your game and reopen it because advanced mode will restart the program. Alright, so once you're in advanced mode, um, there's two check mark, mark check, yeah, two check box uh, areas, one for precision collision checking and the other for separate collision mask. Precision means uh, pixel for pixel, it's exactly only the pixels. So if a fireball comes in between him and the sword, it won't count as a damage because it doesn't, it only counts the pixels. Whereas if you did like a square box, if it hits the box anywhere, it causes damage even if it doesn't touch you. So precision is the exact pixels. And separate collision mask is because when he walks, he's not going to look exactly the same. He's going to be a little bit different when he moves around. So that's going to make a different, um, a different collision. So let's see what they look like inside. So we're going to modify mask. And what I have here is I have a square box as the character. So what this basically means is that this box is my character. The image is just an image in the background of the character, but the box is what counts as being hit or causing damage or being hurt or moving around or on the ground. So as soon as the box reaches the edge of a ledge and it falls off the edge, this is the last pixel that will count as the edge of the, uh, the ledge or him standing on there. So you don't have to worry about where the foot actually is. It's corresponding to this box. So generally it's a good idea to use the rectangle as your character and you want to kind of center it. You don't need to go all the way to the very edge of his foot um, or the edge of the sword. So I just kind of centered it around his head and his body as that's the main parts. If I advance forward in frames, which is this button right here, we can see that he got a lot wider. The sword popped out more, his feet popped out more. If a fireball hits his hand, it won't hurt him anymore because this is the actual collision, his main body. So this way his hand can also pass through a wall and it won't really be a problem. The sword can kind of overlap a wall and that won't be a problem. Otherwise, when you're walking up to a wall, that tip of the sword will stop him forward. He can't walk this any further forward, even though it looks like there's like a foot or two gap between him and the wall. The sword's blocking him from walking any further. So generally, I try and keep the collision around his main uh, body and I use squares normally. You can switch out to precise and you can see how it follows his, um, his silhouette. Uh, it also has an option for separate collision masks, so this is still gray because if you combine all the different sprites together, let's say this one, um, and go forward a few more, you can see that eventually all of these areas are all combined in one collision mask. But if I swap out the separate masks, now it's doing precise on every individual uh, frame. So if I switch out to here, it changed, so you can see every frame is, is different. Um, Again, uh, using the rectangle is generally a pretty good idea because if you walk to an edge, suddenly you might fall off a little further and then you walk forward and your foot kind of um, switches out and now you're stuck inside the ledge because this part uh, is inside the ledge whereas this part is floating above the ledge. So you can usually get uh, stuck in certain situations depending on how precise works. Uh, however, the precise does help with um, where exactly you're getting hit. Uh, which is why I use the main torso area and kind of delete off the rest because I don't need to worry about whether the sword gets hit and causes him damage or if his foot gets hit and causes him damage. So the rectangle seems to work pretty well and I usually take off the precise. Um, so that's more or less how that works. Um, so the manual allows you to change the bounding box which is where this is. Uh, let's say you wanted to include more of his hand. I could change the left let's say 20 and now it's a little bit more. I could change it down to 10 and now it covers more of his hand. Uh, but however, uh, when he walks forward, let's say that no longer starts to matter for where he's standing. So now it's, it's still considered a hittable area it's because in the box a fireball will hurt him even though it's not near him. So I usually try and just narrow it down right to his body. Uh, so let's put that back to 32. Um, and so usually you want to keep these numbers exactly the same for every sprite, all the sprites you have. Um, so if I 
take off separate collision mask, so I just have one. So every box is going to be exactly the same. There's no need to have separates if I'm using the rectangle. So we'll press OK on that. Um, also of note, um, the origin point is where it's going to drop your character on the screen. So it's corresponding to this crosshair, which I can move around uh, to wherever I want to position it. Uh, it's probably a good idea to use like the middle of the head or the middle of the body. So wherever you move, it matches back up. You could use up here, uh, but if you put him to the left side of the screen and you flip him and draw the guy on the right side, he'll, he'll jump places because he's not lined up the same. So I picked the top of the shoulder, but you can pretty much pick any place you want. Uh, the head and the body is probably a good idea for that. Um, let's put that back to where I had it, which was 3248. Alright, and let's look at the other one. So this is corresponding to the same shoulder in the top left position. If I jump over to here, the origin point moved to the upper top left position. So this way when he swaps back and forth, the origin point is still corresponding as if it was the middle of his head. It corresponds to every position. Otherwise, 3248 is going to be somewhere about right, about right here. So, um, And when he swaps, he's not going to line up on top of himself. He's going to just suddenly turn around and be a foot over. So this way, when he turns around, he's pretty much on himself. Um, and that was a 6048 I had. Alright, so that kind of matches that up. So if we go inside of this guy, we have the same thing. The square box is matching on top of the character. So wherever he's walking, it still contains primarily his torso area. And that's, again, the collision, the arms and the feet and the sword won't cause him damage. And the walls won't get him stuck. Otherwise, if his hand swings backwards, he's going to lock himself inside of a wall when the two collisions overlap. So we're going to use the square box for that. Um, these numbers should pretty much be the same as the other sprite. Uh, the only difference in this case is that he's been moved over by 32 pixels. He's not quite lined up the same. So these numbers got shifted. The top and bottom are still going to be the same. He's 5 pixels from the top, so his hair is a little bit higher. And the bottom is 124, so there's nothing under there. It's missing help pixels. Uh, so we're going to keep the top and the bottom always the same so it doesn't sink into the floor. If you notice how this foot is a little bit lower than this foot, we don't want him catching the floor, gluing himself for a frame, and then stuttering, stepping as he's walking forward because they're overlapping. So we want to make sure these numbers stay the same, identical. So 5 and 124 is okay for that one. If we jump back over here, again it's 5 and 124. It's the same height from the top and the bottom distance as well. But these left and right numbers are adjusted. So 32 pixels in means it's 32 spaces before that starts and it's 64 until it ends. If I made that 90, you can see that it makes it a lot longer. So 64 is where this ends right here. So he's 32 pixels wide on the hitbox area, or in case the bounding box. So 32 pixels across is his width. Um, but in this case, he's starting 32 pixels on the X. The, um, the Y is 48, so it's 48 down. If I jump to this one, the Y is still 48, it's 48 down. The Y doesn't change. He's still going to be at the same height all the time. But the origin point, because it's slid over to match the position of where he's going to realign, that's been added 28 pixels to. So whereas it was 32 to match it, uh, if this was 60, you can see that it won't line up anymore. It slid him over to this side, and so now it won't match anymore. So we want this to be the same position, in this case the left of the shoulder, but you could do the head. Uh, so if I modify this, you'll see that it's 32 by 64. So because I'm sliding this origin point over by 28, I need to slide these other numbers over, add 28 to each side, because this has uh, a difference of 30 or 28 from the 32. So if I go back to here and it's 60, so I added 28 to this one, I need to add 28 to here. So whereas it was 32, it's now 60. And whereas this was, um, I think, 7, 68 or something, I forget, uh, 64. So it's 64 plus 28 is going to be 92. So it slid everything over. Um, otherwise, if I kept the same exact numbers, 32 
and 64, you can see that that's where his old position was. He flipped, he's now standing to the right, and his hitbox no longer matches. So by adding the difference from the origin points, so 32 to 60, so I'm adding 28 to each of these numbers to rematch those together. And so that'll fix the collision. So wherever he walks, it's always going to be the same exact uh, hitbox around him for the entire time. So you should again, just to recap, usually aim for rectangle, unless you're doing a sword swinging attack, then you might want precise. But since he's just walking, we're going to use rectangle. We don't need separate collision masks, um, which only applies to more of the precise area. So we're going to take that one off. Uh, that would be more applicable for an attack. And these numbers should again be exactly the same as every other sprite you have here in the list for the character, unless the origin points get adjusted. So let's close that. And so that's how the um, this character works. Very similarly, if we open up the uh, top-down view for the Zelda character, again, it's um, these boxes are unchecked. In this case, he has a zero, 0 origin point. It's up in the top left. If we modify him, uh, we're going manual and rectangle. We could do precise, and you can see the difference there. Uh, we're going to go rectangle, and these numbers 2, 16, 14, 18 are exactly the same. Um, so press OK, jump to the uh, up position, 2, 16, 14, 18, it's manual and rectangle. So everyone we click on, 2, 16, 14, 18 is the exact same box, so no matter how I press the controller or the movement, he's not going to glue himself into the wall because the this um, collision box is exactly the same on every one of these sprites, it's not going to change. Um, you don't want to use separate unless you're doing an attack, but otherwise uh, that should uh, work. Also of note, uh, if you can see it's kind of small, but the collision box is only at his feet, it doesn't correspond to his head. This allows him to overlap things. If you made the collision up to the top of his head, which is fine, um, it's not going to He's uh, he's going to bump his head when he walks. So if I press play, if I press play and he walks, you can see it overlaps. So it gives you that kind of um, top-down view where he's standing in front of something. And that's because the collision is corresponding to his feet and not his head. So if I walk up to the top and go down, he can't walk down because the collision matches his feet. You can see he's trying to walk, but he can't walk through it. The collision is down here, but it allows him to walk upwards if you want some of an overlap. Uh, this could cause problems for the enemies, though, because the enemies that a hit on the head won't correspond to his head. So it only corresponds if they aim down at his feet. So that could be problematic uh, in some respects. It depends on what you're aiming for. If you, want him, if you don't want him to have this overlap, then just code him so the collision stops at his head and he'll stop right here. He can't walk through it, in which case he can get hit in his head. So depending on how you want to code it, this way we get him to fit. But if you code it where it's just his feet, or collision box it, he'll walk kind of overlapping. And that more or less covers how the collision works. So again, precise and separate, explain those how this works and the origin point corresponds. So try and get all your sprites to be a nice clean rectangle, exact same positions, whichever direction he flips.